Ikoto bobo bobo, makata rabali kana mama. Yake terebali kata si koto bobo bobo. We worship you, Lord. We exalt. We magnify you. We glorify you. We adore you for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way that your name will be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ, God bless you as you connect with us today. Um, we are talking about uh, being intentional with God. You know, intentional serving. You are not serving because um, somebody told you to serve. You are serving because you want to serve. God is looking for people that are intentional. So everything about God is direct. I just want to talk to us today and we will pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, the word said that the entrance of the word giveth light and understanding to the simple. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we are hearing and speaking not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory to thy holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ, God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's just share this on our wall. Being intentional, that's the that's the word for us today, being intentional. You have to do it. The will of God is not what you do by compulsion, even though sometimes we are compelled to serve, to, we are compelled to do the will of God. But God wants us to do it intentionally. That is the only way we can be able to get the guaranteed results. Every time we do things out of our intent, then we are not doing it because of God. God wants you to do it by yourself. The Bible says Jesus on the mountain of Gethsemane, when he was crying to the Father, he said, if it is possible, let this cup pass by me. But he remembered that there was an agreement. He said, thy will be done, O Lord. So he accepted death. And that was how he was able to get that Messiah out from the purpose that he came to fulfill. He accepted it. That's why he said, I gave. He was not taken and killed. You can't do that to him. He, is one, he was the one that gave himself to us. He gave his life. So the service and the, the things of God is direct, not just being direct, it's intentional. You must be intentional in your worship to God. You must do it intentionally in your service to God. You are not doing it because of any man. You might be called by somebody, say, hey, I, I see that there's a calling in your life. But let me tell you something. Don't just follow what the man said. Make sure that you are ready to do the work. Because it is, the things of God is not physical. They are spiritual things. So don't enter it because you have seen the glamour of, you know, being a preacher or a, 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 an, an apostle or a prophet or just being an usher or a, a, a praise team leader and you see all the glamour because that's the first thing people see but, but everything about god is spiritual that's why jesus said to the woman in john chapter 4 in verse 20, 24 the bible said jesus said to her that god is a spirit and they that must worship must worship in truth and in spirit so the service to god is direct and is intentional you have to be in that. I just want to talk to us from my heart today, and we are going to pray. You must be intentional with God. If you are just coming to look, to view, I'm telling you, I'm sorry. There are things you can't get by viewing. If you are a viewer, you become a victim. But if you participate, and you are not participating because somebody told you to participate, you might be told, but let it be that you accept it. You, the Bible says two cannot work together. Amos 3.3, three, accept there's an agreement. You must agree. Even the devil cannot afflict you if you don't agree with the devil. I've said it many, many times, but I just want you to understand that you must be intentional with God. You must be direct with him. That is the way we get things done in this kingdom. This kingdom is a kingdom where you know who you are and you go out and do the will. Not because you are compelled to do it, but because you love God. But because you want to serve God. Because you want to be in his presence. The Bible says in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. At the right hand of the Father, there are pleasures forevermore. But we get to the presence of God by doing the will of God intentionally. 
God will not put a gun on your head and drag you. On rare occasions, God called people like that. A lot of people that God called, God will keep whispering it to you. If you never answer that call, the calling of God in your life will not expire. God will move to the next man. Nobody can have the capacity or the ability to stop the will of God. That you did not do what God wants you to do does not mean that that thing has expired. Nobody has his name tagged to, to one thing about God. If God cannot get it done from you, I remember when God was talking about Jacob. How Jacob will be this great person. His brother is going to be bowing down to him all day. But Jacob wasted his, his youthful age and years. He never fulfilled that. It moved to the next generation. It moved straight to Joseph. Joseph was available. Joseph was the one that was ready to take up the mantle. And God intentionally gave it to him. So we have to be direct with God if we want to do the will of God, if we want to serve God. Lord, let your word that we speak not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God. For the entrance of the word, the Bible says, give it light and understanding to the simple. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Rabo go shokoto bo lika na masaka ta ba ba ba. Rakito robo shokoto bo lika na ba 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 ba. Makata raba shikoto bo. We must do the will of God intentionally. That's why the Bible says, God said, I have set before you blessing and causes. Hallelujah. Life and death. But it's a true life that you might live. So you, you have to choose it by yourself. God will not force you to enter into life. If you decide not to be in life, it's okay. But there is a repercussion for that. There is a place that you are going to be. But if you directly, intentionally, by your own acceptance, by your own will. I remember when Jesus came to the man, he said, will thou be made whole? And the man began to tell him stories. You know, I've been here 38 years. You know, every time the water is turned around, I want to step in somebody's step ahead of me. No. Will that be made whole? It must be your will. If God says you are blessed and you don't want to be blessed, God will not force blessing into you. He has never done it and will not. God allow us to make rational decisions so that we can be able to stand with our decision. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't want to lose you. I don't want to confuse you, but I want you to know that Every time we come to God, we come because we want to come. Sometimes God will direct us to come to him. But if we don't want to do his will, he cannot force us. He cannot force us. That's why the service of God is intentional and it is direct. We must, we must begin to think that way. When you are dealing with God or dealing with the things of God, God said to Moses, tell the children of God and tell Moses, um, David, um, Pharaoh, say, let my people go that they might serve me. Did they serve God? Everyone that refused to do it. Yeah, God did not force them, but there was a, a repercussion. They died in the wilderness, all of them. They didn't make it to the promised land. And it was not the will of God that they should die. God didn't bring them out to kill them, but they chose death. They chose death. So we have to be direct with God. We have to be intentional with him. That is the only way we get things done in this kingdom. If you look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 19, the Bible says, if you are willing, so one, you have to be willing and you must be obedient. He says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. God will not force obedience into us, but he keep telling us that we must obey him. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. That shows that God has given us choices to make. The choice to be successful is far lesser in rating. It's very, very low than the choice to be significant. But the choice to be significant, sometimes people see, ah, why should I do all these things? And there's nothing I'm getting out from it. But let me tell you, when you are significant in life, you become successful. But if you choose success, you can still be successful, but that thing will expire on earth and never remember again. We know about people that were significant in their life. They chose it. 
they had other choices. They could have been like every other person, become mean. But they decided to be somebody that would be a beacon in the community. Somebody that everybody will run to. And they help people. So that is the same thing, the will of God. The service to God. Job 36 verse 11. The Bible says, if you obey and serve me, you shall spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. Now, if, if you see anytime God is speaking to us, I will use the word if. He's giving you an opportunity to make the right decision. But he, he didn't say you must make it. Say, if they obey and serve, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. You have to just be significant in life. Be significant. Don't try to see everything that money must be attached to it. Or if I have scratched your back, you must scratch my back. That's the way people live. The Bible says, if you do that, that means you are not different than the people in the world. If I have help you, you must help me. If I bless you, you must bless me. And people give to people that they can get back from. And the, word, the Bible says, if you do that, you are, you are a wicked person. You see somebody that is in need in your area, you say, oh, if I do this to them, what will I get from it? Then you are looking for somebody that does not need your help. Then that's the person you want to help because we want to buy face. Yeah, it's good. You will get that um, recognition. The person will know you. Maybe sometime they will not even do anything for you back because they don't even need you. You are the one that need them. But people are still happy to do that. You must be intentional with God. You must be direct with him. You must serve him by your own will. Jesus says, seek you for the kingdom and his righteousness. Matthew 6, 33. And all these things shall be added. I have never seen when God begin to carry cane and chase people around and say, why are you not seeking me? We are not created like robots. God allow us to decide whether we come to him or not. But I want you to choose life today that you shall my leave, you and your family. So I said to you before, I said before you, life and death, blessing and causes. But choose life that you might live. Choose it today. Oh, Karaba Sikata Bababa. Makoto Robolika Nama Shakata Bababa. Libraga Sikoto Boyika Nama Shakata Bababa. Lakitaraba Sikoto Boyeke Nama Yika Nama Mama. In the name of Jesus Christ. The word said that the labor of the foolish man weareth every one of them, but he knoweth not how to go to the city. Once we are intentional to God, then we begin to find out how. If you know how, you will know where and when. Everything that you want to know must come from your how. How do I do this? You go direct to ask the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm sending you a comforter who will teach you all things. He will show you everything. He will take you to everywhere. He knows everything. But we don't just want to go to the city by ourselves. The Bible says you labor for nothing. The labor of the foolish man, Ecclesiastes 6, chapter 10, verse 15. Where is every one of them? Because you know it not how to go to the city. There is the Holy Ghost that has been given to us. Why are we not using him? Jesus didn't complain. He said, I will send a comforter that will be with you and he will teach you all things. He will. Because the things I want to tell you, you can't bear it now. So I'm going to send somebody that will take time and nurture you and work with you. We just have to depend on God, depend on the Holy Ghost. And let the Spirit of God lead us. Direct our footsteps. Take us to the place that we are going. Help us to get to the finish line. We can't do anything by ourselves, but we must deliberately, consciously accept God by ourselves. God never chased anybody around. He will always position himself where we can find him. The Bible says, seek him and you shall find him. That is when we begin to do that, then we begin to see the God that we serve. For they that know the God, that is when he will reveal himself to you. They that know the God that they serve, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. Hallelujah. Job 11, 32. They that know the God that they serve, they shall be strong. If you, There is no way you know God if you are not intentionally seeking him. I've seen people that they have a calling. They know that they have a calling, but they are not fully involved with their calling. So you give God probably a couple of you know, time. You don't want to give him all. You give him some of your time so that you can pursue other things. 
And out of your 100%, you give God 20 or 10. You will receive 10% from God. And you pursue your career, you pursue your business, pursue whatever life has thrown at you. You pursue it and pursue it. And maybe 10, 20 years have passed. We discover that those things are like chasing the wind. In fact, even if you succeeded, you still want more. Some people, I was talking to a young man, he said, if I can make a million dollars, that's it. Not quite long. God blessed him. He wanted more. When I was in, in one of the financial industry, one of our upliners, his goal was to get to two million, him and the wife, they will retire. And they chase that two million, chase it forever, like in investment, not just cash. Good stock and bonds and all their mutual fund, everything. That guy is still working hard. Now he was telling me then that he will retire at the age of 42. It's almost 50. Solomon said, everything is like chasing the wind. And one day we shall just relinquish this thing and we are not going to be anymore. Once you leave this body, our body is just a carcass. It's, it's earth. Once the soul of the man and the spirit of the man leaves this body, the Bible says all the things that you have gathered for yourself, who, ha who have you prepared it for? And don't misquote me. I like to live well, be well, have stuff, but that is not my goal. My goal is to know him. Paul said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. That is more important to me. That we come and do this every day. Even when we have so much to do during the day. And it's like we can't make it. We still come. Because we are committed. We are committed. It's not something you are doing because somebody is paying you. If you are not doing it because you are getting the physical thing out of it. You are doing it because there is a covenant. And God is a covenant keeper. When, when God discovers that you understand covenant, then you are ready to work with him. When God began with Abraham, they began to talk like friends and began to hang out. And one day they say, I'm Abraham, I'm going to make a covenant with you. And God made the first covenant, covenant in Genesis 15. And God did everything. Abraham just brought the animal. God licked it up. Abraham later deviated and got the, 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 the born woman pregnant and had Ishmael. And God came back and said, Abraham, walk with me and be perfect. Now I will make a covenant with you. And this covenant, you will be born. God said, okay, you are going to cut yourself. Genesis 17. And blood will gush out. The covenant of circumcision. That blood will come out of you. And all the male in your household. So during the whole time of that circumcision, they were sitting at home. And Abraham felt the pain because the first time he didn't have to do anything. He brought the animal, cut it up and threw it there and God put him in a deep sleep. The spirit of God came down and licked up the whole trench, burned the sacrifice. So there was no pain from him. So the co covenant was one-sided and God came back and said, now I'm going to make a covenant, but this time you will cut yourself, Abraham. And from there, Abraham began to understand it was intentional. If he had said, no, I don't want to have any covenant with you. God will just go away. It was that covenant that God protected. Because God is a man of his word. That covenant is a rigid one. He's a covenant keeper. Every generation that comes from the lineage of Abraham, God remembers the covenant he made with the man. Have we made a covenant that we are going to serve him? Intentionally. Not like a court kind of covenant that when you before you get in, they say you have to bring 10 heads. You have to bring three heads, five heads. Then they want to rope you into something so that you will be afraid. No. God will allow you to roll the way you want to roll. If you want to roll faster, you seek him. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him. As you continue to seek him, in the purpose of God in your life, that is where your purpose is. Many of us don't even know what we are called to do. If God can say we don't know how to pray, prayer, just to talk to him. God said we can't even talk to him. Romans chapter 8, 26. He said, for the spirit helps our inabilities, our infirmity. For we know not how to pray as we ought to, but the spirit makes intercession. That, that means there is nothing we can do by ourselves. 
But we have to individually, directly ask for it. Jesus said, until now you have asked nothing in my name. John 16, 24. Ask and you shall receive that your joy might be full. These people he was talking to was his disciples. They were looking at him. Many of them have been praying, but Jesus said, you are not praying enough. You are not asking the right way. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy might be full. So the, 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 the way Jesus, the criteria to understand that you have asked something is when your joy is full. If your joy is half full, it's quarter full. You have not asked anything yet. And that, that doesn't mean that when you ask immediately, God will just throw it at you. You keep asking. The Bible says, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Ask and you shall receive. It's intentional. It's a direct thing. We have to be intentional with the things of God. We have to be direct. We have to be energized. We have to do it with vigor, with passion. You know the way when you are doing something that you love, you just do it. You don't look at whether there's going to be failure. You just keep going. And that passion will drive you to succeed. That is the same way that you chase God. You seek God. And when you seek him that way, you must find him. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. That's what I'm saying. You shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That is how to find God. It's intentional. For you to love that way, you have to be the one to throw yourself out and love. God already is love. The Bible says, for God is love. So we have to now go and profess our own love. Confess it. Extend it. Do all that it takes to be able to show ourselves lovable. I just want to say this before we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the moment we begin to do that, then we are ready for the next dimension. God will begin to set before us an open door. In Revelation 3, say, I set before you an open door that no man can shut. But before, when we come, we don't see those doors. We have to walk and walk and walk with him and begin to be God. God is looking at the heart. He's not looking at the duration of the time we are. Some people are slower to get him to reveal himself. Some people are very fast. If you understand the portals where you go and mount yourself and begin to pray. For the Bible says that, that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When you know how to reposition and position yourself, then you begin to enter and begin to mount. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, today, as we are gathered in your presence, the word saying your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, O Lord, there are pleasures forevermore. Lord, give us the ability to be direct, to be intentional with you in our pursuit for the kingdom, in our pursuit for righteousness. Lord, we know we cannot make it without you. By strength, the Bible says, shall no man prevail. But we ask the spirit of God, the spirit of truth to help us. Let the Holy Ghost come and be our help, our guide in all that we do by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus. In any way, we have not been able to seek you the right way, Lord. Wash us, purify us, sanctify us. Don't take the Holy Spirit away from us. Don't take us away from thy presence. For in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Lord, at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Have your way, O Lord. Have your way, Father, that your name will be glorified. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. We exalt. We magnify you. We give you all glory and adoration. We give you all exaltation. Have your way, O Lord. Lord, let the Spirit of God possess us right now. Take, take charge of our life. Lord, we are asking that it, it shall be intentional with us. By the authority and the power in the name of Jesus, we release ourselves, O oh Lord. Let the Spirit of God move in our life, move in everything that we do. We ask, O oh Lord, Father, that the Spirit of God possess us and direct our path. The Bible says the step of the righteous man is ordered by the Lord. Order our steps. Help us to stand in the covenant. When you are a covenant person, you don't break it. Covenant always have a repercussion. God knows about it. That's why God is direct with us. God is intentional. He tells us 
all that it takes. And we have to think if I have to be in this, this covenant is a blood covenant. The blood of Jesus was used to enact that covenant. That's why the Bible said that the cup we share, is it not the covenant of the blood of Jesus Christ or the testament or the testimony? That's a covenant. We are tied with blood. Every child of God, we have a blood that is holding us together. So it's not just that we accepted him. Like the Bible said, if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. No, it, that is just an entry level. When you begin to go deeper, then you are going to be taken into an oath with that covenant. That's why you must confess Jesus verbally. There is no way to get to salvation. And you say, don't worry, I believe in my heart. I believe, no, no. God said, if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, so that at the, the latter day, that your word will be standing. And the devil cannot say, you did not become a Christian. You don't say, I believe God. Don't worry, I don't have to say it. You must say it. If we confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that he died and resurrected for our sins, we shall be saved. It's direct. You must be intentional with God. We must be intentional with God. Holy Spirit divine, we ask that you take control. We give you access to our life. Take our spirit, our soul, possess us, use us vigorously to do thy will. Use us to fulfill thy purpose. Let the will of God in our life be fulfilled. Help us to get to the place called there, to our destination. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for we know that you have done it today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want us to pray for those, some people that are going through some stuff now. If there's any kind of affliction in your life. The Bible says affliction cannot rise a second time. We are talking about being intentional now. Even to cast out devil, you must be intentional. Don't go and play with the devil. The devil is a crooked devil. He knows how to argue cases and win cases. Sometimes if you get him in the emotional side, he will get you legally. So don't play tricks with the devil. You must be direct with the devil. If you say devil, get out, you make sure you are telling him get out. Don't try to go and get some things that he has gave you to keep. And you are using those things to attract. Demons can enter through any means. Can enter through just what you love, the clothes you like to buy, the food you eat, the places you want to go. Those things that keep you going. The devil will set you up with that. That's why the Bible says, Upon Man Zion, Obedience chapter 1 verse 17, Upon Man Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their position. Look at where position is. Position is at the last stage. But the first thing you get in Manziah, in the church, is deliverance. I've never seen people come to church, and after they have given their life to Christ, they call them for deliverance. If you do it, people will run away. So the church tries to relegate it away. And many times, people never get delivered, and they become, they, they rise into the ranks, and they become deacons, they become ministers, they become ushers, they become praise team members. Many of them become assistant pastors, and go and become a, a pastor of a church get to the place of bishop and you are not delivered yet. Ah! The devil will set you up because you are playing with holy things and you are playing with spiritual things. God is a spirit and they that must serve him must serve him in spirit and in truth. So people get to church and they, 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 this is averted. I have also done that, make mistake of that. People come and you just say, okay, you want people to come and you don't want to get them, you know, scared. You don't you don't present deliverance. But one thing is, before you get delivered, make sure you want to serve God. Don't play with spiritual things. Don't cast out devils and go back and dine and eat with the devil. The devil will mess up your life. If possible, take the life of that person. Make sure you want to be with God. That's why you must be intentional with the things of the spirit. These are not things you play with. God is the spirit. The devil operates also in the spirit. Every man has a spirit, but we are not spiritual beings. When man is, have a spirit and live in his, a body, man have a spirit and have a soul and lives in a body. So ask God, say, God, deliver me today from blood-sucking demons. If you look at verse 18, it says, and the house of Jacob shall be fire, and the house of Joseph flames, and the house of Esau for stumble, and they shall kindle in, in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. But you must deliver, you must be delivered. 
let deliverance come upon you right now from the crowns of your head to the sole of your foot one day i'm going to talk about how demons enter into us through eyes every opening in the body can be a channel for demons to fly in but you must be guided and the devil cannot possess a christian but the devil can demonize that person because once you you confess the lord jesus christ then you have given yourself you are giving your body hopefully to god but because you have not cleaned the house the house is still coming with trash and chunks so you have opened some can worms and the devil will still have access into the body right left and center you need to go to deliverance even though the devil cannot fully possess that person fully if you see people that have had any kind of encounter with god they go back and forth and a wavering person a carnal minded person cannot be with god people that are carnal minded doesn't mean that they are unbelievers these are people that are believers but they are still tied to the wall their mind is still tied to things that is why the bible called them carnal minded the people that are of the flesh if you look at the book of the book of oh Lakata, i'm trying to go into deliverance now that's not where we are going today i want to talk about intentionality but if you look at romans chapter 8 verse 1 the bible says now therefore there is no condemnation to them that are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but walk in the so in christ it is possible to be in christ and still walk in the flesh that does not mean that you are not in christ but you are in the christ but you are walking after the flesh so you are carnal minded and you the devil will mess you up because you cannot be stable a carnal minded person the bible says is unstable at water today you are hot for god tomorrow you are cold for him then tomorrow you are hot this day you are you are not stable because you walk in the flesh but when you walk in the spirit oh la kataraba shikataba let me let me just get that Romans 8 1. I want us to read it by the grace of God. The Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ. So, let's say 20 people are in Christ who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So, in Christ, it is possible to still walk in the flesh. That's what the Bible calls a carnal mind. But when you walk in the spirit, the Bible says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. If you are still walking in flesh, you are under the law. But if you are walking in the spirit, you are free from every law of death and sin. Because the spirit of God is the one that leads you. That's in Romans 8.14. If you look at verse 14, he said, They that are led by the Spirit. Just go and read the whole book of Romans, chapter 8. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So he's telling you, Romans 8 was giving us an analogy or a summary of being intentional with God. You come into Christ, you can still see people that are living their life and they still come and sing in church and the Holy Spirit will move and they are living their life doing whatever they want to do they are in flesh but they are still standing in the altar of God and you say why is God allowing them yeah God will give you a long rope to, to make a U-turn if you don't you are playing with fire because Jesus told the woman God is a spirit and they that must serve him must serve him in truth and spirit if you look at the discussion between Jesus and Nicodemus in John chapter 3 Oh, Rakataraba. Somebody's just pulling me, pulling me, pulling me. I want to end this thing here, but somebody's pulling me. Say, let's go deeper. We are going to go deeper now. John chapter 3, when Nicodemus came, the Bible said there was a man named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. I want us to see it. When Nicodemus came to Jesus Christ, he came with his position. But after he met Jesus, the eyes of his understanding was open. Nicodemus was not an unbeliever. Many times we make mistakes. We try to preach with John chapter 3 to sinners. You can, you, can, you can 
use this to tell a sinner to come to God. But Nicodemus was in our time. He would be in the office of the bishop. The Bible said there was a man. So he was a man. A Pharisee. A Pharisee is somebody that understands the Torah. That have read the Bible back and forth. They call it Torah. The, in Judaism. And they can recite it. They are called the doctors of law. They are Pharisees. They are Sahendra. The highest level of the Judaism. So he was a Pharisee. His name was Nicodemus. And he was a ruler of the Jews. You cannot be a ruler of the Jews if you, are, if you don't understand the Torah. But the man came to Jesus. The Bible says, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, teacher. Because he is coming as a professor of law. Now he's seen somebody that understands how to break the laws into particles and explain it. So he called him teacher. He said, Rabbi, we know, we. Now, this is one man standing in front of Christ. Why is he saying we? That means there was a discussion among the doctors of law, among the Sahendrans, among the Pharisees and the, the publicans and the Sadducees. They have discussed that this guy that is by the corner of the road, he has some, some knowledge that we don't understand where he's coming from. So they sent Nicodemus. So Nicodemus was not just coming by himself. He came in the order of other Pharisees. He said, we, we, we know. It was one man. We know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. In our time, Nicodemus will be probably a, 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 a PhD holder from Harvard that's, that, that has three or four PhDs in Christian religious knowledge and faith and different, um, what's it called, disciplines in Christian though, But he does not understand the spiritual things. So he wanted to know and he, when he came, he was surprised that Jesus didn't even look at all the accolades that he tried to give to you. Know, we know that you are a teacher that comes from God and all that. Jesus could have fallen for that hoopla, but he didn't fall for it. He said to him, verily I said to him, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. So born again was just even a, a, a step further from where Nicodemus was. was. Nicodemus was not, <laughs> he understands the law, but he wants to understand the part of the spirit. And he began to argue, say, how can a man be born when he's old? Shall he enter the second time? He wants to bring logic because he's a lawyer. And Jesus said in verse five, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter. So what again is, will give you access to see, to, to come through the door of the kingdom. But you can't take things. You cannot get healing. Even though you are born again, you will still be sick. You are born again, you are still poor. You are born again, you are still oppressed by demons because you can be demonized as a born again. But when you are born of the water, which is the word of God, and of the spirit, that is when you enter. And that got the man. And Jesus now went further. Jesus didn't want to let him begin to mess with him again. And in verse 6, Jesus said, that which is born of the spirit of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is what? Spirit. Marvel not that I said, you must be born again. And verse 8, he said, for the wind blow where it's least, listed. And thou hear the sound thereof, but cannot tell where it's coming and where it goes. So it's everyone that is born of the spirit. So the discussion started from being born again and ended up with born in the spirit. This kingdom is a kingdom of the spirit. You don't deal with God the way we deal with other people. You must be intentional when you are doing anything with God. You must be intentional when you are coming to God. Because him that must come to God, the Bible says, must first believe that he is. And it's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So if you know that this God I'm serving, it's not just, I just don't call God. That's why we, we have not been able to see him. God has not revealed his dimensions to us because we are not intentional. When you are playing games, God will know you can be there for 30 years and God will just allow you. And you'll be touching holy things. you even be singing. Sometimes the spirit of God will use you to do mighty things. Haven't you seen what the Bible says? At the last day, some people say, oh, by your name I did this. God said, I don't know you. And you say, ah, I was preaching in your name. People were giving their life to Christ. Those people came to me, but you don't know me. And I don't know you. So upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. 
and there shall be holiness. You cannot live holy if you are not delivered. It is almost impossible. Deliverance will now set you right. And you begin to set your house in order. But Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob, the house of Israel, shall possess their position. That is when the house of Jacob shall become a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. That's when fire will come, the light of God will begin to shine upon you. Oh, lakatasi kataba, likana masikoto boru kataba baba, prakito robusa kataba, likana masikoto bobo. You must be intentional with God. Don't play games with God. You must be direct with Him. You must be intentional. You must be intentional in your service to Him. You are intentional in your worship to Him. Many times we want to say, oh, "Don't worry, God will understand." God does not. Or God is a spirit. Don't try to use the, the wisdom of man to connect God. God is a spirit. God knows the end from the beginning. Don't try to say, oh God, you know, this just happened. And you know, I'm a man. He knows all that. God knew that we cannot stand. The Bible said, God knew that we are not sufficient. That's why he said that the spirit helped our inability. Your weakness is God's side. You have to give God every part of you that is weak. Your strength is your side. Because the Bible says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. That's what God told Paul. When Paul was praying, he said, let this cup pass by. He was talking to God, said, take this yoke off me. And he was praying, he prayed. The Bible said three times, God called him and said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. And my strength is made perfect in weakness. It is in weakness that I am stronger. So don't be worried about your weakness. I will take care of that. So give your weakness to God. Every man have one. Don't be ashamed about it. Go to God intentionally. Say, God, this is who I am. I know you know me. You created me. Before you see God, God, I've seen you many, many years. God knew who you are. Just tell him who you are. Connect to him. Let him help you. And you will see life will be better. But you must be delivered. Upon man Zion shall be deliverance. If you have not been delivered, and deliverance is not a wash, it's not one time. You, you go for deliverance periodically. And sometimes you do self-deliverance. You begin to pray intentionally. Even up till date, as a man of God, I still go through deliverance. I set myself apart and begin to pray for some stuff. Because the devil is a wicked and a crooked devil. I told you many, many times. If you let him, he will beat you down and keep you down. And if you don't get up, he will kill you there. We don't have to give any opportunity for the enemy to shine. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe somebody's help today. This is not where we're going, but we went in there. Thank you, Jesus. For the word I've been spoken, let it bless us today. I want to pray with you if you are sick in the body. The Bible said, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, and the Bible said when he called unto him the 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. I want us to stand in that world. He gave them power against. So we have power against every authority, every sickness or infirmity. We break every yoke and covenant. We destroy every plans of the enemy in our lives. We cast out every unclean spirit and we destroy every demons. We send them out. Get out! Lose them now and let them go. And we begin to ask for healing upon everyone that is sick in their body. Whether it is bone, whether it is ulcer, fibroid. What is it called? Leukemia. Cancer, high blood pressure. Everything that has a name. The Bible says the name of Jesus is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. At the mention of Jesus Christ, every knee in heaven and on earth shall bow. Thank you, Jesus, for it is done now. Receive healing in your body. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And like I said, I want to pray with you if you are here and you have not given your life to Christ. We have an opportunity to say, Lord Jesus Christ, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. And I believe in my heart that you died and resurrected for my sins. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. God bless you. Hallelujah. I love you all with all my heart. But above all, Jesus, love you the more. Look for a Bible-believing church. Connect with us. 
If you need prayers, let us know. You need deliverance, we can make an appointment and we'll pray with you and you see many things. And we'll give you things that you can do after that. Because after you have been delivered once, you need to know how to deliver yourself and also deliver your folks. It is done. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.